Welcome back to the next video in the Diaphragm Elk Call series. And as a reminder, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Elk 101 YouTube channel, just click the little red subscribe button down there and then click the notification bell to make sure that you're notified every time a new video from Elk 101 is released. Today, we're talking about how to use a Diaphragm Elk Call to bugle. If you haven't watched the previous video on mastering Diaphragm Elk Calls and just the basics of using a Diaphragm Call, be sure and watch that first because the principles and the tactics that are used in that video and explained in that video are going to be vital to you maximizing the sounds that you make with the diaphragm call. So when it comes to a bull elk sound, to the bugle, that's the main event. For me, that's the key sound to be able to call in elk. And being able to master it and sound like an elk is important to be able to call them in. So we're going to go through the very basic mechanics of a bugle. And if you listen to a bugle, you'll notice that it typically starts out on a lower note, it gradually climbs up to a high note, and then it pauses on that high note and holds that high note for a bit. From there, it drops off fairly rapidly back down to the low note. So if you imagine stairs going up, you start at the low stair, you climb up to a top stair, you stay there on the top stair for a bit, and then you quickly descend back down to where you started. When it comes to a bugle, that's exactly the same principle. That mechanic and learning how to control that mechanic is going to be important. And if you can control the sounds from your diaphragm, you're going to be able to make that bugle sound. From there, it's just a matter of adding a little bit of realism and gaining confidence in your ability to be able to control the sounds from the diaphragm. So the way we do that, as we learned in the first video on learning to use a diaphragm elk call, is with tongue pressure primarily. Tongue pressure, as you increase tongue pressure against the latex, you're going to go up the scale and to a higher note. So we want to start with low tongue pressure to start at that lower stair. Increase tongue pressure up to the top stair. When we hit the top stair, we want to force some air across the latex. That's going to help us hold that high note consistent so we don't get any wavering that just our tongue pressure might allow it to do. It's also going to get us more volume on that high note. Then when we're ready to drop off that top stair, we simply let out of the air pressure, taper off and decrease the air pressure as we rapidly pull our tongue off of the latex to decrease the tongue pressure. So it's going to sound like this exaggerated. So you notice I start with that low tongue pressure just a very slight amount of air going over the latex to produce that, produce that low note. And then I increase my tongue pressure to climb up the scale. As soon as I hit the high note, I want to force some air up across that latex from my diaphragm from down here. So I want to kind of flex my diaphragm and force some air to help hold that high note. And that's all there is to a bugle. From there, it's just a matter of getting the right cadence as you go up the scale, holding the high note for the right amount of time, and then dropping off with the right cadence. And again, when I come down off of that, it's pretty abrupt. I'll drop a couple stairs and then I just pull my tongue away rapidly. Oh. So that's all there is. A gradual climb up the stairs, hold it on the top, start off and then drop straight off. So if you'll learn to practice that mechanic, everything else will come together really easily for you. The problem is, most of the time we hear an elk bugle, we grab a diaphragm, we throw it in, and we try to sound just like that elk from the beginning. It's important to break it down to the very core of the sound, the mechanic of the sound, and learn to train our tongue for that. From there, everything else comes really easily. There's two other things I want you to add to that sound once we get to making the bugle. The first is just a voice growl. So that gets us a really low growly sound at the beginning, as well as at the end of the bugle. And the way I do that is just right here in my throat, I just make a grrrr sound. Just like I'm, I'm frustrated and saying grrrr. 
get it as low and as growly as you can. That coupled with that light tongue pressure and light air pressure on the diaphragm is going to give us the perfect starting point for our bugle. So that right there, that combination of the growl in your throat with a little bit of air going across the latex makes that perfect start. From there, you drop the growl off and increase the tongue pressure. And then you add that growl at the very end as you come back down. That's really all there is to a great sounding bugle. And I'm sure you're asking yourself, that doesn't sound anything at all like a bugle. But when you couple it with the bugle tube and do those simple mechanics just like that, you're gonna be able to make great sounding bugles over and over. Again, really exaggerating everything. I think it's so important to exaggerate it so that you're really familiar with each aspect of that very basic mechanic of the sound. From there, speed it up a little, hold that high note just right, drop it off abruptly, and it's gonna sound like this. Again, at the end, I'm just really exhaling all of that air that I've been holding in my diaphragm there. I'm exhaling all of that. I'm growling in my throat and I'm dropping that tongue pressure. Without any growl, without any voice in that, this is what the bugle is going to sound like. Not really realistic, but when just adding that little bit of growl at the beginning and end, it's going to sound like this. And that's all there is to bugling. If you'll practice those mechanics, not worrying about the final result just yet, keep practicing those until you can hit that staircase all the way to that top high note and then hold that high note. The last thing I want to mention is the high note, and that's the key to a good sounding bugle. You want to be able to hit that high note and hold it, and that might take different placement in your mouth of the diaphragm. If you're having troubles hitting that high note, move the diaphragm around just a little bit, see if you can seat it a little bit differently and get that high note. If you can't, there's a good chance you might need a different diaphragm because if the diaphragm latex is too thick, it's gonna be hard to hit the high note. If it's too thin or too lightly stretched, it's gonna be hard to hit that high note. So finding just a perfect middle of the road diaphragm that's gonna get you on the board for the whole spectrum of sounds is gonna allow you to really dial in from there. If you need a recommendation, the all-star diaphragm that's available on the Elk 101 store is a great starting point. It's a good middle of the road with a medium latex and a medium stretch. This is the Champ, it's a lighter latex with a lighter stretch. Some people might struggle to hit that high note with it. The other one is the Contender diaphragm that has a thicker latex. So if you're blowing really hard on the diaphragm and you're having troubles controlling it or having troubles with blowing the sound out, you might try the Contender. But if you're looking for a good starting diaphragm for anyone, novice, intermediate, experienced, the All-Star is going to be a great one that's going to be able to allow you to hit cow sounds as well as good bugles, low notes as well as high notes. Again, here's what the bugle sounds like. Practice those mechanics and then put it all together to sound like this. From there, you can add chuckles in and a couple other variations of sound. If you're interested in learning more about using elk calls and especially the tactics and the sequences we use to call elk in, be sure and check out the University of Elk Hunting online course at elk101.com. Go there and sign up and use the promo code YouTube to save $10. And if you want to learn how to chuckle, be sure and watch the next video here on the Elk 101 YouTube channel. 
The success rate for do-it-yourself public land elk hunters hovers around 10%. The reality of that statement is that 9 out of 10 elk hunters each fall fail to fill their tag or the average elk hunter only fills their elk tag once every 10 years. But average no longer applies to you. Crush the averages and sign up for the University of Elk Hunting online course today and become a consistently successful elk hunter.